Astronomers detect unexpected class of mysterious circular objects in space, even though we usually have a pretty good handle of all the different kinds of blips and blobs detected by our telescopes, it would be unwise to assume we've seen everything and know everything there is to see out there in the big wide universe. Case in point, this new kind of signal spotted by radio telescopes, which has astronomers scratching their heads. Four of these strange objects have been detected, and all of them are circular in shape, and there are particularly bright uh, areas around the edges, like a ring or a bubble that's more opaque around the edges. An international team of astronomers led by astrophysicist Ray Norris of Western Sydney University, Australia, has nicknamed them ORCs, O-R-C's, short for Odd Radio Circles. O-R-C's are short. And in a new paper posted to ARXIV and submitted to Nature Astronomy, where it awaits peer review, so this is something totally new, July 9th article. Circular features, he says, are well known in radio astronomical images and usually represent a spherical object such as a supernova remnant, a planetary nebula, a, cir a circumstellar shell, or a face on disk such as a protoplanetary disk or star-forming gal galaxy. They may also arise from imaging artifacts around bright sources caused by calibration errors or inadequate deconvolution. Here we report the discovery of a class of circular feature in radio images that do not seem to correspond to any of these known types of objects or artifacts, but rather appear to be a new class of astronomical object. The orcs were first spotted in data collected during late 2019 pilot survey of the Evolutionary Map of the Universe, the EMU. It was conducted using the Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder. It was one of the world's most sensitive radio telescope arrays. When scientists began looking at these images collected, they spotted a strange faint circle. Then they spotted another strange faint, cir faint circle, and then another still. And once it might just be a glitch, one might be a glitch, but three seems somewhat more significant. So they're not glitches, obviously. Even so, it could still be a quirk in the instrument or a local detection, like the time the Parks Observatory was detecting a microwave oven. It seems unlikely, given the stringent efforts to maintain a radio quiet zone at the ASKAP site, but it's not completely out of the question. That possibility was put to rest when the fourth ORC was, uh, the fourth ORC was discovered in archival data collected in 2013 with a giant meter wave radio telescope a few years before ASCAP, ASKAP was switched on and follow-up observations of ORC-1 and ORC-2 used a different telescope. The Australian Telescope Compact Array also revealed the objects. And they certainly are odd. All four ORCs are at high galactic altitudes, at some distance from the galactic plane, and are around one arc minute in diameter. That's around 3% the size of the moon in the night sky. But since we don't know how far away they are, that may not mean much. All four are also only visible in radio wavelengths. They are completely invisible in X-ray, optical, or infrared wavelengths. It's possible that they could be linked to galactic activity, but only two of the orcs have an optical galaxy near the center of the radio mission. One of the orcs looks somewhat different, Orc 3, appears to be more of a uniform disk compared to the more ring-like appearances of the other four. You might be thinking, hey, that description sounds a little bit like a supernova remnant or a planetary nebula, and you would not be wrong, but the researchers already thought of that. For planetary nebula, the radio spectral index is not consistent with the radio spectral index of the orcs. As for supernova remnants, the problem is with numbers. The EMU survey only looked at a small patch of the sky and detected three orcs. For that to be likely, they were there would need to be at least 50,000 supernova remnants in the Milky Way, but we only know of 350. The team believes that whatever is causing the orcs sounds is likely outside the Milky Way, like a giant spherical shockwave from some massive event. 
Researchers write in their paper, several such classes of transient events capable of producing a spherical shock wave have recently been discovered, such as fast radio bursts, gamma ray bursts, and neutron star mergers. But because of the large angular size of the orcs, any such transients would have taken place in the distant past. It's also possible that the orcs represent a new category of a known phenomenon such as jets of a radio galaxy or blazer when seen end on down the barrel of the jet. Alternatively, they may represent some remnant of previous outflow from a radio galaxy. There could also be more than one cause of the orcs. It really is an intriguing mystery, but the scientists seem pretty convinced to one thing, that what we're looking at is a new phenomenon or new detection of a known phenomenon, but not a repeat of that time in 2018 an astronomer discovered, quote-unquote, Mars. We might not have to wait long to find out more. In their data, the team also identified six even fainter candidate orcs that could be followed up to help shed some more light on this strange phenomenon. Anyone got a real good radio telescope? Maybe you can help observe them and find out what they are. The new research has been submitted to Nature Astronomy. It's available on ARXIV. This is from Live Science, and it's on Science Alert by Michael Starr. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.